us just like Jesus taught about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The son comes back to his father, the father welcomes him with open arms and has a celebration. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girlfriend Lungu. And we are Fun and Jesse. So, right about now, we're going to do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we want to thank everybody for been subscribing to our channel, you the Venus MVP. And the most important thing, too, you want to thank the people who have been giving us reaction videos. You the realest time to be. Thank you, thank you so much. We have our new channel which is called uh, Finding Jesse 2.0. Uh, just go click the link below on the description, or probably we're going to put it on the comment section below. We're going to pin it. Just click that link, and then it's going to take you to the new channel. And probably feel free to subscribe and see. Feel free also. Yeah. And also probably just check out our videos yeah I mean you'll be you'll be maybe interested and also just let us know what you want to see you know videos and stuff like that and also another thing is we have our podcast also the link is down in the description below we talk about societal issues we talk about um, love anything concerns about life. just life yeah just click the link below just listen to our podcast most of the podcasts we also post it on our YouTube channel. But if you wanna go check out there, we have like 20 podcasts already. Just let just go and check it out. I mean, you can find it on um, uh, you can find them on iTunes. You can find the podcast on uh, application called Podbean, and then on iTunes you're gonna find it as a funny uh, diving in with funny Jesse both in uh, Podbean and, and iTunes. Feel free to just listen and let us know what you think about our podcast. Anyway, so right about now we're going to do another reaction. This one right there was suggested by a lot of people. They, said it's, they suggested that we should go react to best Christian Muslim debate ever. So without any further ado, let's get it. About Jesus. I, I have a bigger, I don't want to run out of time before I ask some go of these ahead. broader questions. And the one I'd like to ask you is, um, it's, uh, Muslims have a hard time understanding how a loving, merciful God, it seems like a contradiction, would crucify his beloved son. They, it, it, it goes against, it's a contradiction to them. Why, can you answer this question, why would God, who's so big and so forgiving and loving, not just forgive us all our sins and have to kill the person he loved most in order to forgive us? I think the answer to that is very simple, and that is, that is that we have such a high view of what relationship with God is, and we have such a high view of what sin does to that relationship, that it requires, and these are God's parameters, these aren't my parameters, not your parameters, Peggy, it's God's parameters, it, it requires a death, it requires a sacrifice, it requires a, a blood that has to be shed. That sounds it kind of seems gruesome. horrendous to me that God would do that, and the fact that God would do that is, is all the more appalling to me that he'd do it for you, and he'd do it for me. The fact that he would take on that punishment on himself. It is not something that he imposed on himself. It is something he chose for himself to do. He chose willingly to do that. To me, it's not horrendous. I'm appalled that God would do that for me. Because otherwise I'm lost, and so is everybody else sitting in this audience here. We're all lost, because it, it does take a blood sacrifice, for the wages of sin is death. Any little sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. That means we're all dead. It's because the sin is so that. horrendous. Paul Romans, Paul Romans, thank you. And that's where all this idea is coming from. Let me finish, though, Shabbat. It's because, no, Shabbat, it before you get onto your tirade on this again, let me finish. It's very important you see this. It's because of that sin that separated us from a God that God took it upon himself to rectify himself. Otherwise, we're all dead. Otherwise, we're all dead. And I thank God for that. You see, Peggy, actually, this idea was originated by Paul. I mean, he said the wages of sin is death. He made the, the cross the center of his theology. And that's why he put so much on it. That's why he said if Christ is not raised, then uh, you're still in your sins. To him, God had to come and die for your sins. But it makes no sense, because if God wants, he can forgive us, just like Jesus taught about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The son comes back to his father. The father welcomes him with open arms and has a celebration. Nobody has to die for somebody to be forgiven. Because if somebody dies, then there is no forgiveness. Forgiveness. You know, that means we, I just took my full price. I'm a cruel judge. I just exact the full punishment. Somebody goes and dies, and then I'm happy. But if God was loving and kind, he should be loving and kind to his son as well and save his son by some other means. 
And uh, in Jay said the son was willing, but notice that's the representation in the last of the four Gospels. But Matthew, Mark, and Luke show that the son was, although willing, he was submitting, but not offering himself. In the Gospel according to John, the story is revised so that Jesus actually offers himself, because that just looks better. But even if the son offers himself, it doesn't really solve the problem, because if the son loves the people so much that he wants to die for them, doesn't the father love the people more than the son loves? Or equal to? Why doesn't the father come himself? You know, I don't shove my son in the, in the path of a moving car to go and save somebody. I go myself and I protect my son. So the whole thing makes no sense. Now, Shabir, let, let me... Can I just say something on that? Yes. I think it's very simple why he didn't, why he didn't come himself. He did come himself, and that's one of the mysteries of the Trinity. But you have to ask us, why does it that Jesus Christ had to come? The reason why is because you say somebody cannot take on someone else's sin. It depends on who's sinned against. See, any time I sin, every time I sin, even if I take that pen from you or that watch from you, and I give it back to you, and I ask forgiveness for you, has that not impinged upon God? Yes, every sin impinges upon God. Even eating of a simple fruit infringes upon God. Therefore, he who was sinned against, it is he who took on that sin against, who took on the punishment of that sin. There is the enormity of what we see in the cross. There is the enormity of what we have seen by Jesus Christ coming down as the Godhead, taking on this sin, though he was the one who was sinned against. Now that Islam does sense, not answer. Because what you're saying is that if you sin against me, I cannot forgive you until I punish myself. It doesn't make any sense. If I want to forgive you, I just simply forgive you. What you're failing to understand is that every sin that we do not only has a horizontal consequence, it also has a vertical consequence. No, Muslims don't understand that because say, they don't understand the relationship that is there between God and no. man. When you say God came down himself and died, then he died on the cross. So that means God died. He it's just did. getting worse every time you go. He certainly did. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. If you, if you said the son died, then at least you have the father to look after the world. But, but we have no problem. It was God that died on the cross. Why do you have a problem with that? Because if God died, that's blasphemy. Then who would run the world? Who would run the world? <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. What do you think? Uh, if you said it's interesting. <laughs> There's so much to think about, but I guess both of them are reasons for having that point yeah. why is it that if i sin someone else has to pay for my sins doesn't make sense but then life doesn't work like that if i kill someone today i don't think my mother would be the one to be responsible for that i'll be held accountable for my wrongdoings it's just you know it's just it? like it's just like when you kill somebody today the laws like you we live in Cyprus here. Yeah? <clears throat> your sister or your mother is not gonna be accountable to that. It's you. They're gonna take you in. You get it? But your mom will be in a position to probably uh, he might be, she might be in a position to defend you, but uh, defending doesn't mean she's offering herself. Yeah, Even if she exactly. offers herself, they won't yeah. arrest her. Yeah, they won't arrest her, you get it. So, I mean, either way, you will have to suffer. It's you who did that. Not suffer. Pay for my... Pay for your sins or whatever thing that you did. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I like the whole discussion thing. I mean, it's really, it's really uh, motivational and also trying to, 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 to do what like, to find more and to try and understand one another. Really, really good. I like it. That's so good. I forgot to make mention of the last part of why would God die in you? Yeah. Even the guy was wondering if God dies, who's going to run the world? It's going to be run by the Illuminati. <laughs> I, I feel like that other guy was overwhelmed. This one, or the other one? The other one. Yeah. We're well, just throwing answers without. But anyway. I don't think he thought that through. Yeah, but anyway, you know. I think that's why Christians get caught off guard. Yeah, God the died. same thing I want. I wanted to say. You cannot argue with. Uh, I mean, you can start. No, a, you can. You can start you a can. debate, the but the moment that believe Jesus wasn't God. Yeah, you can, still you can start a, de uh, a debate, but the moment you start mentioning that Jesus was God, that's it. That's where they get you, like boom, crap. Yeah, I think that's where it was. Like you can't. You can't. You can't. So if God died in the cross, then what? So who's there now?
get it. I mean, anyway, the whole thing was just a good conversation. Such an amazing debate over here. Anyway, guys, if you feel like we reacted to this video in a better way, to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to go down our comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you feel about our debate and what you feel about this video right here. And the most important thing guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you better, better content. And last but not least, we're going to see you in the next video. Peace out.